Good evening, welcome to Montenegro. Thank you this very much. This is your first time here, isn't it? It's my first time in Montenegro, though I have visited the different parts of the former Yugoslavia. Are you going to travel around a little bit? Or? I hope so. I will go to Budva, I will go to Kotor, spend a week here, uh, just look at places I didn't see before. And it looks very beautiful already, the mountains and the sky. It's a very particular landscape. Now, I know everybody mentions this, but I can't help myself. You were an inspiration for the Rolling Stones song, Street Fighting Men, weren't you? I read that in your biography. You know, who knows? But Mick Jagger sent it to me uh -huh. uh, with a note saying, this is for you, and please publish it in your, news, in your magazine, because uh, the BBC are refusing to play it. Uh -huh. uh, so that's how the, perhaps it was for me, perhaps it was for everyone, for the whole movement at the time. And those were the 60s, the students, protests, or we can even say revolution. I mean, they did overthrow, for example, in Pakistan, yes. a dictatorship. So how would you, looking now at the street fighting men from 1968, could you draw a comparison between him and the street fighting men of today, especially thinking about the Arab Spring, but also Greece and all over the world? Well, we live in a very different world. In the 60s and the 70s, there was a lot of hope that we could change the very foundations of society, rebuild the world again, both in the West, where there was capitalism, but also in the East, where there were governments which called themselves communists but were actually run by state bureaucracies. And, you know, there were demonstrations against them as well in Poland, uh, in Belgrade, in Prague, uh, in, in other parts. So we, we knew this, these societies were very different from Western societies, but we wanted big reforms in these societies as well. And that was the nature of the new left, anti-capitalist, anti-bureaucratic. And we felt that we could create societies which were both socialist and democratic. Mm -hmm. And that remains my hope. But at that time we believed it could be done, it might be done, and we had hopes in Czechoslovakia in 1968 and the Prague Spring, also a spring that was crushed by Soviet tanks brutally. And in my opinion, one reason for the implosion in the Soviet Union is that they lost the intelligentsia after they crushed the spring in Prague. That was the end, the beginning of the end, even though they didn't know it. Uh, and in the, West, in the Western world, even though you had capitalism, which we wanted to overthrow, because we felt that this was a capitalism which was based on a tiny minority being very rich, mm -hmm. and a large majority never Stunning. ever being able to reach there, but that capitalism was still better than what came in the 80s and 90s, the neoliberal capitalism, in which the differentials between rich and poor have just become like this. In the 60s and 70s, they were like this, and we still wanted to make them less. Today they are so huge, and today when people struggle, they tend to say we want a better form of capitalism. They can't see beyond that, and that is the big difference. For instance, you, you mentioned the Arab Spring. <coughs> The, the Egyptian army is still attacking demonstrators, still killing them. And what people in Egypt want, and they said it at the time, they want political freedom, but they also want social and economic justice. So in a different way, the same slogans come up again. You know, justice uh, for all. Uh, not just political rights, but also social and economic rights. And this is now a universal problem. Uh, in this part of the world, the Balkans, all of them, Greece, Romania, Bulgaria, here, very similar problems uh, in terms of injustice and inequalities in the, in the country. Uh, but not just here, in the United States, in Spain, 
in France, in India. So this globalized world has made our problems also universal. So we have a lot to learn from each other. But at the moment, uh, I think the, the hope is being slowly reborn again. But we are not in the same period as the 60s and 70s. And it's very important to say that. So sometimes I travel and young people say, uh, don't you wish we were still in the 60s? We wish we were alive in the 60s. And I say, look, we did lots of good things in the 60s, but ultimately in many parts of Europe, we failed. We failed. So don't imitate our failures, but learn from our okay. mistakes. Yeah and move forward. You're a man of the left, as you yourself said, but don't you think that the left today is living a paradox? Because on one side, its criticism of capitalism and neoliberalism proved to be true. But on the other side, does the left have any use of that? Well, <clears throat> I think this is a problem. Um, in my opinion, the left should develop an alternative program and an alternative set of social and political values which it fights and argues for. For instance, in my opinion, any modern state should not allow the basic necessities of life to be privatized. Housing, public transport, water, electricity, gas. These are things which every human being on this world needs. Why should they be used for profit? Why should individuals make huge amounts of money out of the needs of ordinary people, basic human basic needs? needs. I, I think the state should own them. I really do. And I think the privatizations in Eastern Europe and here in this part of the world and Russia have been a total disaster. And they have affected very badly ordinary, the lives of ordinary people. Not, the, not just the poorest people, even middle class people have been affected by that. And you have tiny elites now which have grown rich on looting their own country's wealth. And that has to be altered. It can't go on like this. You can have all the latest fashion shops on the streets. Max Mara, this shop, that shop. Look at it, feel good. But that feel-good doesn't last too long because only a tiny minority of people can even afford to go into these shops. And that, I think, is a huge, huge problem. And so for me, you need very deep-going structural reforms in the system. Does the left, does any current of the left right now have a, a convincing alternative to the well, current in, world order? Um, in France, in the recent elections, uh, the left party of uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon did argue the case. In Germany, Oscar Lafontaine, who was once the, 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 the second most important leader of the German Social Democratic Party, argues that case in the left party. And slowly in other parts of the world, similar currents are emerging because they know that this system doesn't work at all. But what is astonishing is not the weaknesses of the left, because after the scale of the defeat that was suffered in the 90s, it takes a lot of time to, to recover from that. But when people ask me, I say, yeah, that type of socialism failed. But capitalism has failed 60 times, and socialism has failed only once. So we need to try it two or three more times at least to develop a better system and a better... So method. you do believe in an epochal rehabilitation of the left? That yes. Is possible? I believe there is no other way for the world to move forward. Uh, people talk about things like climate change. How can you even tackle problems on that scale? And pollution and the ecology of the country being destroyed and the coastlines being destroyed by crazy anarchist building displays of ugly, monstrous buildings. How can you change that unless you have on every continent some form of commonly agreed social plan? And you mentioned this and people say, ah, oh, but planning, that's the opposite of freedom. And the answer I give is, excuse me, without some form of planning, you will destroy this planet.
you will just destroy it. You know, gone are the days when people used to dream that every family should have two cars and two refrigerators and two this and two houses and, this, and two boats. That time is gone. Only the very rich can have that. And it's useless pretending that this can be something which every citizen can enjoy. So I think we need a big, big change. And this crisis of 2000 today hasn't taught the politicians and their economic advisors anything. They want to carry on as before. And the danger is in these times, you also have the development of the extreme right. In France, in Greece, for the first time, of saying, yes, we will kick out all the immigrants and we will kick out everyone and we will develop a pure strategy, never works like that. It's been tried, that particular experiment in Germany and Italy before the Second World War, and it didn't work. But people are so desperate that instead of analyzing what the real problems are, they go for easy targets. The problem is immigrants, Polish immigrants in, in Britain, Turkish immigrants in Germany. So let's get rid of them. would like to get rid of them. And, you know, someone was telling me in Zagreb just yesterday that some members of the extreme right go around saying to people on the streets, there are too many black people here taking our jobs. There are hardly any black people in Croatia. Why the hell? the Balkans. It's astonishing. Yes. They're picking up arguments from the extreme right in other parts and using them without any relevance to their own society at all. But that's a sign also of desperation. You know, I think people are in a state of despair. But can the left adapt to the, mod to the way the world is today without uh, relinquishing its core values and principles from... Well, Before. it depends. I mean, the world as it is today is a world that has been built on mindless, brainless consumerism and the encouragement of debt. Borrow, borrow, borrow. Yes. Buy, buy, buy. That can't work anymore. People can't do that because of what the banks have been doing. And so everyone is rethinking. So the world as we know it today, or as we have known it for the last 25 years, is clearly not working. And yet, despite that, politicians in this part of the world are still carrying on privatizing to make money. It's living in the present. Presentism, let us call it. Don't think about the future. And don't think about some of the good things we had in the past. Wipe out the past. Don't think about the future. Just live in the present and just make money. That is the philosophy of our leaders, political leaders, whether they're center-right or center-left. It doesn't make a difference.